now all right and here we go bam this is another video from tournament guidebook right um one-liners axioms and mantras right from vision warrior the man gonna be on the stream the author of the book right is coming on uh sunday so he's gonna be here on the stream so make sure you're here for that now uh today is the threat is stronger than the execution the threat is stronger than the execution and today of course we have a game that will actually demonstrate what we're talking about but who can tell me in the chat what this actually means i'm sure you probably heard it before probably heard a nimzo quote that's right nj you probably heard it but what does it actually mean what is the what's the theme what are you getting from it you're right you hear it the threat's stronger than the execution and you're like oh yeah that's fire yeah but then they like now apply it and you're like wait i don't understand right so what is what is it what is it? let's get that in the chat from you the threat is stronger than the, than the execution and then i'm going to pull up in fact you know some of the 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 greatest things you can read about it right okay so what do you have the idea is stronger than the check okay i like it keep the pressure and build up rather than release it very nice nj keep the tension going and don't break it mind detox a move which forces your opponent to respond in a certain way is more important than actually pulling off the threat itself Eat a Nova. Using the initiative to gain time to push forward a plan. Um, that's not wrong. It's not wrong. But it's not necessarily like right either. I mean it is, but it's like not, but it is, but like maybe attacking from all directions, put pressure. I mean. No. Okay. Yo, what's up? Can I just finished grinding three minute and five minute puzzle rush. What's up, man? Yo, we just hopped into the analysis just now. So we're going over the threat is stronger than the execution. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube right there too. All right. So here we go. First game here. Here it is right now. Actually, let's go over real quick. The threat is stronger than the execution. So this is what it says on Google. If you Google it, right? Wow. We're going to pop up Google. Then we're going to pull up the full screen right is this one better a little bit better okay so look what does it say right grandmaster and famous chess author aaron nimzowitz was famous for writing the threat is stronger than the execution this principle reinforces the importance of delayed gratification of patience in chess and as well as in life sheesh my goodness well hold on let's get one for that man hold on okay Wow. Okay. Knowledge from the big fella. Yeah, that was knowledge, knowledge, right? So, right, in fact, what it really is talking about is patience, right? You don't have to always just execute it. It's the threat, right? The threat can be even stronger than just executing it. Because, of course, even your opponent can lead psychologically or even just on the board, period, blundering and losing the game. GG, start a new one, have a good day, right? So, now we're looking at a game here right now. Um, white. White is, uh, let me actually get the first names of them. Um, so White is Mo Morali Karthikian versus Levan. That's crazy. It's like, but it's Levan with an A, so maybe it's like Levan Arashidze. Um, and this was in two, 2019. The Elo, so I'll tell you how strong these big fellas are 26 11. So the man is not a joke by far. And then as black, the Elo is 25 14. Again, Talk stupid if you want to, right? Okay, so, all right. Them boys, them boys is big fellas. So, they know what they doing out here. It's some big boy chess. So, here we go. E4, C5, right? Knight of three, E6, okay? D4, and then it takes and takes. This is natural. This is all the stuff you see anyway, guys. Like, like nothing new. Not like, oh, the theory, like, bro, it's the same. This is regular Sicilian stuff. And also, all openings regularly are the same. You need to develop your pieces anyway. So this is very natural. Playing more of a classical type Sicilian, all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, kind of crazy. All right, let's, let me catch up with the chat real quick. Thanks for the follow, the Welsh Canadian. What's good? CCG says, sheesh. What's up? Natural, right? Time and off. That's right. Time and off. Time and off. For all you time and off players, that's correct. Very flexible Sicilian. Sometimes it can turn into Shevaningan variations of the... Of the um, of the uh sicilian you also sometimes night dwarf ish right it can flip it's very flexible time and off very very flexible so pretty cool knight b5 immediately is what you like here knight b5 immediately i mean you can you know so you can play it no problem no problem at all thanks for the follow nas me 
Zainal, Nazmi. Thanks so much. You love the Tamanoff? Yeah, Tamanoff is actually pretty strong. I have a lot of uh, friends that play the Tamanoff. There's a lot of good material out there, honestly. I was, I was never a fan of it myself, personally. Of course, I just like aggressive stuff and a slightly unorthodox. So that is my style. Knight c3, queen c7, and g3. Pretty cool. Okay? Now, the whole theme of today's the threat is stronger than the execution, right? Threat is even stronger than the execution. So, with that being said, um, it's, this is going to be at the at the end. So, at the end, there is a sequence that happens that demonstrates this perfectly. But right now, ain't nothing to see, bro. You just develop it. But it is a cool way to see this right here as white to actually see something new to play against the Sicilia. In fact, not even just the Tomanoff. You can play this setup right here against any Sicilian. G3, Bishop G2, right? Uh, Wesley So I know likes to recommend this and some of his newer material, but it's just new stuff. Like it, it's different from what everyone knows. Again, slightly unorthodox, which is the wave these days, right? It's de definitely throwing your opponent off, not showing them your prep and like getting a game and not just straight, you know, 30 moves of theory. G3, it give you some great prospects. G3, A6, Bishop G2. Knight of six castles, knight takes, right? So he takes on d4, you know, I, I guess. I mean, you don't actually have to, I guess. But maybe, you know, I'm not a time and off player myself. In fact, the engine says moves are bishop e7, d6, and h6, which I totally agree. I don't think I should take immediately right now. Let's see what he followed up with. Knight takes, queen takes, and bishop c5 with tempo so I can castle, right? Now, okay, white to move, chat. What do you do here? Bishop will be, will be proud is probably not so white to move chat what do y'all move Wh what do we do where do we go what are we doing what would you do i'll tell you what i would do and i'm gonna tell you what he did all right we gonna look at everything bishop e3 oh okay phantom master cleanser yeah go ahead just jump off the building yep don't follow him do not follow phantom master cleanser yep you will not like it bishop f4 queen d3 bishop g5 queen d3 queen d3 Castle and castle don't hassle. Okay, big fella. I see you out here. I see you. Queen C4. So, well, in fact, I want to show you Queen C4 literally is 100% premium. Natural Cambodian phase blockage. Send a stretcher to his address. We got it on file. Sheesh. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Yikes. GG. Start a new game. That hurts very bad. So. That is not a move. In fact, you only have a few moves. Queen d3, queen d1, right? And then bishop f4, which is crazy. I was, I'm a fan. Now, in fact, you guys have a lot of, of, of moves there. I'm a fan of queen d1. I'm just going to play queen d1, right? I've studied a lot of theory, a lot. And like this reminds me sort of of Scandi as white a little bit, which is fine. You know, we can Scandi feel to it. Queen d1, queen e2, whatever. Now, I, I'm not mad, right? He still has to develop and castle. His bishop's not that good. I have pressure. King h1, maybe h3, e5, f4, right? I'm good. I'm good. I can play queen d1. But what I didn't like as much, and, and in fact, this is the second move from the engine, is bishop f4 here. Bishop f4, right? You know, I'm just not trying to trade queens that early. But bishop f4 is on the board. And right here, he actually, he should have taken the queen, in fact, because it just becomes like, yeah, okay. Right, white's ahead on development, but even engine says like, yo, with best play here, it's like equal. It's just super equal. So he didn't do that though. He was not trying to do that. Uh, are these the real names of the players? Yes, they definitely are. And after bishop to f4, the d6, he blocked it. So he blocked it here, but now you let me get the keep the queen on the board. This is what I wanted to do anyway. So now after queen d2, h6. Well, no, we just got a, not a free hand at the king, but in a very easy way of playing. When you can make it easy for you, you know, that, that's some of the best chess you can play, is when you have a very easy position to play. Centralize, right? Slowly improve my position. You know, uh, maybe take a little bit of space, which is an advantage. And that's what white can do here. It's easy. This bishop's 100% gross. King is here. Maybe you have to worry about sacking sometimes. You do have aspirations of this. So this is probably Black's best bet of doing anything. But it is white to move here. So chat, what do you do? Right. What do you do here? How many moves we got left? Well, we still got like about 20 moves left. Rook D1, E5. Which 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 rook, Vita Nova? 
E5 and we live. Thanks for the follow one fuel. Rook A to D from Kia Raj. A4 and I punch your boar. A4 is a ridiculous move. Actually, no, it probably it does stop E5. So I understand. Thanks for the follow button. But it does make a huge weakness on B4, right? Well, now it's even worse for our pawn structure. Rook F to E, the silent A3 from Dougie. Rook A to E, okay? Well, in fact, here it is. It's Rook F to D1, All right? I'm oh, sorry, Rook, not, not Rook F. I was looking at Rook F. <laughs> it's Rook A to D, bro. It's Rook A to D. Yeah, and why this Rook? Because this Rook actually can help defend, and you do want to get off of this eventually, right? Because if not, you know, if you play Rook E1, this is sensitive, and Knight G4 does hit the pawn. And you do want to play King H1, but, it, you know, the Queen has to stay here. It's just much easier. You don't have to ever deal with anything else because this Rook defends it. So Rook A to D1 is good. It's also not doing anything in the corner. It's not doing anything. And, and, and correct, could potentially go to E1 as well later on. Very nice. Yes, Vita Nova. Rook after E1 is also here as well. So we centralize everything. Everything's doing something. When on the contrary, I mean, yes, Black has a worse position slightly. In fact, the engine thinks that too is slightly worse. It's like 0.35 here, not even half a pawn. So really, they ain't worse, right? But from a human standpoint, you know, if we flip the board here, you don't have that much space. Look at the difference, right? You always have to look at it from their point of view. Look at this from Black's point of view. There's like no space. And really, you feel very cramped you may have to play e5 but that lets you get the bishop out so maybe you have some aspirations especially as you can use this tempo but then you do have to worry about the weakness of d5 right you do have to play this correctly still even though it's equal you got to play this accurate so best move is e5 black plays e5 stopping d6 from being captured back that boy up only move right and um bishop e6 was the next move so we developed everything's all good everything's all good and developed he takes on c5 he takes back and black's doing straight he like yo i'm good i'm good bro i'm good right ain't nothing here you know the threat stronger than the execution still ain't here yet right it still ain't here yet we're not at that part of the game yet so why to move chat what you gonna do right now it's pretty solid for both sides in fact being enough but you are right both sides are really solid here engine agrees it's like yo the best advantage is half a pawn just over half a pawn and i understand right rick can come to d8 you can castle but white again has more space and you have weaknesses to hit you're more active activity will trump material most times that's what gary kasparov says right um activity i'm very active i'm castled i'm i'm first to develop i'm first to centralize i'm better right now i'm just better he said i don't know the notation but move the pawn move the knight on the left side of the board between the pawns <laughs> cardinal right i don't know the notation but move the knight right pick it up and put it from the left side not the right because the knight on the right wherever that is don't move that one move the let the knight on the left side and put it in between the pawns very nice move cardinal in fact cardinal not knowing the notation actually has the right move knight to d5 is the move you may not know notation, but I'll still hit you with this flex, says Cardinal. Knight d5, that's correct. Knight d5, after knight d5, bishop takes d5. And after bishop takes, this is obvious, you don't take with the queen. He takes d6, d5 and queen d6, right? So queen d6, this is the position on the board. In fact, you know, white's doing very well, and black is too, though. Right, black is blockade the pawn. You would ideally want to do it with the knight. Let's flip the board. You would ideally want to castle, play knight e8, move the queen, and play knight d6. But when you move the queen, there might be d6. You have to be very strong. He says a, a very, very uh, accurate. Strong pawn on d5 there. Correct. In fact, the d5 pawn is extremely strong. Very, very strong. If I ever move the queen, I, d6 is going to be annoying. And it opens the bishop up like a monster. Very, very monstrous stuff. But it's not that bad. Like, oh, you still have to ask white here as black. Hey, how do you, you know, progress here? And which white can literally do anything and torture black for the rest of the game? C4 and like shuffle and it's going to be a long game. It's going to be a very long game. Big palm moves. GMS. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to my guy. You know, hey, what's up, D? Thanks for the follow. E4 is black. E4 is black, that could be a move, but it does weaken it. The further you push it, 
Now it's a huge weakness, and F pawn can't even defend it. So now you're forced to defend it with the knight, which means you probably want to castle and play rook e8. Literally, that's a target for me. And I can play c4, lock this down. You try to chip away at the structure, I play b3, I make it very solid. And I have a very easy plan the rest of the game. Bully this pawn and win it. Rook here, double on the bub, right? Ali, uh, Ali Ekin's gun, F3, hit you sideways. It's a wrap, sir. Easy, easy one. So that he didn't do that, right? Instead of afterwards, right here, after queen d6, you say rook e1. Let's see what the engine likes. Engine likes c4, I'm a fan. Queen e2 and rook f e1. But he played f4 here. Like, he went for it. He like, hey, bro, I'm ready, which I understand. The king's in the center of the board, and he wants to open the F-file maybe for attacks later. This man wasn't playing no games. Oh, yeah. He followed this right, though. Like, when you castle, it's game time. That's what I tell students. When you castle, it's game time. I am castled before you, which means I am allowed, and I should actually try to open the game up before you get a chance to castle or open it while you're castling. So that I can actually have more activity of the pieces, which gives me more of an advantage just because I have activity. It could be equal material. Everything on the board could be 100%, 1,000 wow percent equal. And But if I have more active pieces, I'll win the game. Very strange, but it's very true. And after F4, there's castles. He gets out the way, right? Because he, you know, to take is a mistake. If it snaps, I'm taking with the rook. Maybe even check. Like, let's not even look at this, right? Let's. Let's not even look at that. So he just castles and gets out the way. And after castles, okay, it's white to move. Obviously, we're going to take on e5. That's why we played f4, right? We was okay with trading to open the file. He takes it back because we have to. And then d6, right? So he actually sacrificed the pawn. And what did the man do? Oh, he took it. Oh, it's about to get real. Surprisingly, it's very equal still. But it's about to get real. White to move. What you do, chat? Ooh, sheesh. White move. This is about to be very spicy here. Rook b1, bishop worth pawn. Poisonous. Right. What was that? Toxic pawn, right? Rook after e1, rook b1, d7. Push, says Sean. King h1. Ah. Major bus driver. Take those pawns on the b and c files. Okay. Rook X F six. Rook takes. Maybe D seven first. Rook B one. Push him, baby. Says Butner. Yeah, push him. Yeah, sir. We'll say push him. Right now, C four is strangely the best move here. And I say strangely, right? Let's do a quick piece count. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. And not not a piece count, a pawn count versus five pawns. But a bishop is worth a pawn sometimes. Bishop pair. Right, but even though I'm down a pawn as white, c4 is the best move, actually. Strangely enough, c4 is the best move. Yes, I'm a pawn down, but I have a passer. I have compensation due to the b file. If you play b6, it, b6, it weakens it. I can lock it down with a4. And playing rook b1, and you can't really progress because this bishop's so strong. That's, that's hard. That's hard to see. And that's hard to actually do as a human, to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm good, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm down a pawn, but I got the strong bishop. I got the comp and all this other stuff, and I got to win. I mean, that's very, very hard to do, right? It's more practical, in fact, to play what he played in the game, which is D7. He was like, yo, push that boy. I'm pushing it, D7. He does play D7, and then Rook A to D8. Very easy move to make, right? Now I'm about to take on D7. He's sitting here like, bro, what are you doing? I'm about to take on D7. So what do you do, white? As white. What do you do? I mean, he's about to take on D7, whether you like it or not. So are you going to stop this? Or are you going to do something else? It's your move, big fella. What you doing, Chad? Ooh, nice, says Nas. It's on you. Bishop H3 from Ice Cream. Bishop H3 from Kia Ross. Okay, okay. Queen A5. Okay, that's a move. Rook takes F6. Again. Now Rook F6. Well, I guess you could. Maybe you got some compensation there because the queen takes. But the move is very simple. I don't need to do this. You know, and it's not clear. But bishop h3 is. I just defend it. You ain't doing nothing. So black says, you know what? Bro, I don't even care. What you doing? You out here tripping. You tripping. You going to give me another one? Look what's your move. Like, what you going to do? And now, here it is. This is the legendary part. This is the legendary part. This is where the threat is stronger. Than the execution, right? 
the, the threat is stronger than the execution. So, white's a move, okay? Some of y'all, y'all gonna find this, like, instantly. Oh, just saber, right? Saber on, hitting, two-time, crossbar, backflip, right? Easy, easy, okay? Queen d6, queen sack inbound, don't even do it to yourself. High leg, 64, don't even do it. Rook takes f6 is going to happen eventually, says NJ. Take on f6, take on f6. Right, absolutely, snap that boy, don't even think twice. Sheesh, my goodness. And then after takes, what do you do now? What do you do now? The threat is stronger than the execution. This right here, this this move is all about the the entire title right here. Everything we talked about, right? And again, the theme, right? Think about this. The theme of the the threat is stronger than the execution. The theme is actually patience. That's the word. Patience, right? And I said it because I wanted some of y'all to get this wrong, which you did, right? Of course, right? Obviously. Of course I would take on H6. Jeez, take this boy. Absolutely. Boy, what you thinking? Just take it. But then he like, ah, gotcha. Got him. Let's get them got him's in the chat. Where am I got him at? Got him, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm just coming right back to, to see you. Hey, everything's smooth. You thought you had me, but you actually don't at all right wow and then you tread wrong here you make the wrong move now you lose yikes wow wow trying to get all fancy sacking a rook and all that right but the threat is stronger than the execution right here because this will be more execution this will be more execute execute trying to right now of course fine line there you do need to execute to win but after rook takes f6 Take on f6. Check this out. Bishop f5. Sheesh. And now, oh, that man is in some trouble now. Oh, that man is in some trouble right now. Bishop f5. Queen takes h6. We in the mix. Sheesh. You should come and take with Peter Lego on Magnus Tour. You right. You right. You right. Absolutely. You know what? Hit him up. You can get him on the phone. Banana joint. Thanks for the follow. So after, um, you know, queen takes aces, this is a rapster, but king g7, he defends it, but cat, okay, cool, that's fun. Oh, that was sweet. Move order is everything, right? Yo, thanks for the follow, Pim Jesus, thanks for the 11 months. Yo, so, you know, almost a year there, that's crazy. Um, now, right, you did all of this, right? You sacked the rook, you know, we talk, you know, clapping it up, everybody hype. Oh, man, bishop f5 is sweet, that's awesome. The threat is stronger than the execution, but that's not over yet. This, this ain't checkmate. You still got to finish this. So how do you finish it? Queen f4 from Holy Ampersand. Seems like bishop takes d5 was a poor decision earlier. Queen f4. Yeah, I believe so. Rick f1 from Vita. Right. And that's crazy. Let's look at these, right? Queen f4. Queen f4 actually is no good due to Rick h8. Crazy. Looks good, though. After check, I'm out the way. Have a nice day. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Now, I'm not chilling too hard because I'm still weak king, but this ain't that bad no more. You can't get to these squares. Okay, rookie one, right? Makes sense. And then I go queen d5. And I ask you, what's your next move? I'm centralizing. You can't move this really, right? You don't have anything. And then you start to realize, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I'm about to lose this game. You start thinking about life and everything and like, you know, how much you hate this game, but you love this game. Why am I even at this tournament, right? Yeah, that's what happens. Those are the thoughts that start crossing your mind when you reach that. Oh, yeah, I didn't been there. I didn't been there. Queen F4, Bishop E6 here. Bishop, man, hey, man, it's a family channel. Let's not do this. Holy on, croissant. Family channel. You mean before? You mean where? You better be very, very specific here. And a very, very pacific here, okay? Don't make sense, right? Yes, I know. I know you need to be very, very pacific here. At the end of that line, you just show oh the very, queen f4, rook h8, check here. What you talking about? Rook here, queen d5, bishop e6, bro. What you blocking with your whole face? What's next? What you gonna do? You gonna take with the rook? Oh, that's cute. You oh that's cute. Oh that's cute. Oh man, that's cute. Okay. Oh man, she's she's. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Don't work. 
How about Rick F1? Right, that was another that was another one I seen in the chat. Rick F1. Okay, Rick F1. Uh, not enough due to let's see. Let me turn the engine on because as a human, this is hard. <laughs> so, hey, look. It, let me flip the board. If I'm a human here, I'm still on eggshells. Like, whoa, hold up. But I do know right now. I do know I need to cover squares and I need to centralize and probably play Rick H8 and put the king on F8. Yeah. So as a human, if I have time, absolutely, I will end up finding centralize the queen. Makes sense. Right. Try to figure out where your entry squares, which is like G4. And but then after you get to G4, where's the next entry square? Maybe H5, which makes it perpetual, which means I need to make I need to make some look for my king, which is actually some backward look. That's a new Jedi term. Rook A, Rook H8 and make some backward look, actually. So now my king can sidestep you back and forth. Queen's going to centralize, defend. We got a passer outside juicer, you know, classic right triangle GG. Sheesh. So let's run that back, though. Flip it. Right, Rook F1 don't work. It don't work either. I saw what Queen D3 in the chat. Was it Queen D3 as well? Queen D3. I think it's the same plan actually. Just Queen B2. You're not threatening anything. You have to remember, right? You sacrificed material, so everything you do has to be some type of threat from this point out. Either you're making a threat or you're setting up to make one. Shout out to my students that heard that in our lessons. Why not Rook G8? Rook G8, it's a good question. Good question. I think Rook G Rook H8 defends H6, which is weak. And Rook G8, you're giving him extra pawns that you don't actually need to. And it also can be threatened. But the move here actually was Queen to C3. So going to the move, he actually played Queen C3, which is correct. In fact, this was the only move. This was the best move by it, according to the engine. I think uh Queen takes C5 being one of the big threats. Also, Rook to uh, D6. Check this out. That's a nasty move. Like, Rook D6, how do you... You can't defend it. You can't defend F6 if I get the Rook to D6. So, he played B5, right? Allowing Rook D6 anyway. I mean, I don't think there was even a move. Let me see what the engine says. Oh, snap. <laughs> I can't even believe that's even possible. So, the engine says, this position is so bad right now, right? This position is so bad. That, okay, move number one is B6, right? That's move number one. And B5 was what he played, same thing. But the engine's like, hey, you know what? You got a better chance playing this move or this one. Playing Rook to E8. Get out of here. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding. You think I'm making this up? You think I'm making this up? Here we go. What did it say? Right there. Right above me. Look up. You see it, right? Right there. Move one, B6. Move two, Rook D to e move three rick after e stop it just stop right now if this is your best move you are in some trouble you in some real trouble only plus three not bad that's correct right only plus three yeah it ain't that bad but of course as as a human like this can get crazy like looking at this from a human standpoint your king looking crazy like rick d6 is crashing in as a human, then the emotions kick in. You're not thinking, oh, I'm an engine. I'm about to, I can, this is fine. This is probably plus two and we'll mess it up. You're thinking, bro, how do I not get made it? How did I mess this up? How do I defend this? That's what you're thinking, right? Uh, practically, like for real, that's how it really is. And after queen c3, he played b5, rook d6. And then he played check, obviously, queen f2. And then queen to c1. Whoa. 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 All right, Chad, what do you do? Set it up. Do your thing. Do your thing. Saber on. Be very careful. Pigeon, we in here. Thanks for the follow. Door knob, dude. Here, Ross says, take it. Queen takes F6. What are you doing? Rook takes F6 from Jack Curran. I don't know if that was trolling or not. I don't know. But Rook takes F6 is actually the worst move, bro. It's funny. Rook takes F6 is more of um it gets to it goes to plus two. Right now it's plus eleven. Rook takes F6 is plus two. And it's simple because it says, Oh, I just king G8. Uh, I'm fine. That's ridiculous. But Queen takes is like plus eleven. King goes back to G8. And I mean, not that I'm i I'm not surprised, but I'm also like, wow, this is a very strong move. Especially when you have time to think, you can find these moves. I was very impressed by White's next move here. And it is White's a move. Chat, what do you do? How do you finish this? What do you do? 
Be very careful on how you approach this. Be very, very careful. Remember, threat is stronger than the execution. The threat is stronger than the execution. Queen e7. Okay. Queen e7. They sort of follow Hey Thomad. We got Bishop a7 and we great. That, that, a hey, run, take that back. Take it back. Take it back. Anything eight is great. This is like Jedi rhyming 101. Okay. Anything eight is great. Right? That is very easy. Very easy. Don't do that to yourself. Bishop h7. The bishop h7, that's a gross move if you don't have a good follow up. Rig d1, deflect. Rig d1, but then if I take it, right? If you go, if I go rig d1 and you take it and then you take here, you out here looking crazy. Sheesh. And I come back and I'm just like, I'm staring at you real hard. I mean, a very uncomfortable stare. Anybody see Alexa? <laughs> Alexandra today? <laughs> Gorienska? <laughs> Bro, anybody see her today in chess.com stream, bro? Uh, she was staring at old girl. Bro, she was staring at her so hard. Oh my goodness. I was like, yo, that's uncomfortable. Okay. I understand. Look, sometimes, yes, you look at your opponent, but she was like. And she was just looking. She was just looking, bro. And then I was like, yo, is she going to look back down or no? Is she going to look back? I was literally watching to see how long she was going to stare. Go check it. Like, I'm not, bro, go check it. It's either on YouTube or, or Twitch for uh, chess.com. Go check it. Yo, she was staring so hard. It was uncomfortable. You could see the, the saber out of her eyes. That's scary. That's very scary, bro. Timestamp. That's a good question, bro. It's towards the end. But uh, yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't even. I can't even help you there. My bad on timestamp. But maybe somebody probably has it. Maybe Google it. But she was, yo, it was deadly. But after you do something like this, that's what you get one of those. Oh, you get that stare real quick. All the way out. All the way out into your, to your car, to your, to your room when you leave with your head down after making that move. Okay, so that's not the move. Chat, what do you do? Rampaging. Thanks for the follow can you stare down your opponent attorneys? You can, but it's imagine, bro. You can, he says it. Can you stare down your opponent or is it bad etiquette? You can, but imagine somebody just staring at you, bro. Like you playing uh, <laughs> like really, like you playing a game of chess. And the guy makes a move and he stares at you while you're thinking and you make your move. Now they can look at you, that's fine. That's totally fine. Ain't nobody's stopping you. And they can stare at you too, but it's just extremely awkward. Right? To have somebody literally staring at you for five to six minutes or however long you think until you move. Nothing stopping them, but for real. Yo, it was awkward and she did that today. Oh, she did that today, bro. I was nuts. I was like, oh, she, she is savage. Yo, she's scary, you know? She real scary. Man. Hey, bro, Gary used to do that. And Gary would give you the, the like the grunt too. Like Gary was like, a human pit bull if you think about it you didn't want to get close to him you didn't want to get near him and then when you play him like he grunts he would grunt at the board like imagine that grunting at the board who does that like, gary does though gary grunt at the board bro that's your move tell you how garbage you are chip toby thanks for the follow bro thanks for the follow so no you guys are wrong in fact i think i saw it from someone let me scroll up and see if I saw the move. Uh, you were close. Nope, not close. Nope. You guys all got it wrong here. That's right, Vita Nova. Hold up. You said Bishop E4. Yeah, but you were close, Vita Nova. It's actually H4 because Queen G5 is annoying. So in fact, let's go back. Everybody, put your silent emotes in the chat. Let me follow you. Let me match our energy. Put your silent emote in the chat. It's a silent move. It's a silent move. And it's a silent h4 you know you have to really be calculating and understand what's going on in the position for something like this to happen right check this out right the king looking crazy i mean you got to look out for all the checks right which are covered right you're also his king looking crazy you thinking you have an immediate mate but you actually don't weird the geometry of the piece is just not fitting you it's just not working out the geometry ain't working right 
But h4, and you always have to worry about queen g5 as a very great defensive resource. No matter what you do, any move that you make besides h4, I'm going to play queen g5 and defend everything and look at you like you're crazy for letting me do this. So h4 stops any queen g5 action. So now I can continue with with still stuff to do. I still have room to do or uh, work to do. But now I have you know room to do it. And there's no checks also. Very great point, Vita Nova. The silent mean the piece doesn't make noise when you move it. That's exactly what it means. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Great move. Do or not do. Yes. So after H4, Rook D to E. <laughs> you know, I, w I remember going this far. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. This is the part we're going to talk about today. About the threat stronger than the execution. The Bishop F5 part. That was the biggest part of today's lesson. Is when you played Bishop F5 instead of taking all H6. Threat being stronger than the execution. But what's funny is I didn't go further. And I was actually really surprised. <laughs> I'm like, I'm seeing this for the first time too. <laughs> oh, this was your move? Oh, okay. Well, we good then. Well, this is a win. This is a win-win. What does silent mean? Silent means that it's not a move that looks like a check or a capture. In fact, it's a move that you really kind of don't consider. It's a move that can be a connector of something, but it's not the loud moves, we would say. And loud move would be like a check or a capture or an immediate tactic. This one, like H4, you were not expecting it because it wasn't a check or it wasn't a capture or it wasn't like a tactic like Bishop E4, Queen F5, trying to get there quickly. H4 is a very silent uh, thing, or they call it a quiet connector as well. Quiet connectors. Uh, yeah, so right, Rick E8, bro. I mean, obviously, we ain't even gonna think about this. He took and he made it a knight. <laughs> I mean, this man made it a knight, bro. Look at this because it's made, it's made, bro. I mean, what a move! He could have made it anything, but he made it a knight. Like, it doesn't matter what he makes it, it doesn't matter. He could make it a queen. There's still no checks. So it's not like, yo, he had it to make it a knight because there was some perpetual. Nah, bro. He just trolled the man. In a way, not really trolling him. In fact, I love the decision due to queen g7 being mate. So let's say you tripping or you like, you don't want to take the queen for whatever. I mean, even that would be losing still. But this is made on g7. Beautiful. Forcing a capture, obviously. Knight is hilarious. I mean, big, big facts. But now it's white's move, chat. So... Now, it's still on you. Is this game over or is it not? In fact, there is now a check and you are actually probably 99% sure you're getting mated if you allow me to check you um, as black here. Bishop E4 looks good from gold chain. It should be four. That's cute. Setting up. I like it. Bishop E4. Let's look at that, right? Gold chain. It's saying Bishop E4 saying, go ahead, snap real quick. Go ahead. But then it's mate. Uh-oh. Yikes. And it also cuts the connection between the queen and the rook. Very nice move. In fact, that's number move. That's move number two from the engine. Very nice. But that's not the move chosen for this game, but it still works. Bishop h7 from death by lactose. Okay. Bishop h7, maybe, from John Good. Bishop h7. All right, y'all right, y'all correct. It is bishop h7, bam. And then what's funny is the next move is bishop e4 afterwards. It's bishop h7, then bishop e4. Like it really made a difference. In fact, it does somehow. So we actually gonna look at that. I guess bishop e4, he doesn't have to take. He can play h5. So what's the difference here? Let's see it. Like right now, let me actually show y'all what I'm looking at. Right here, it says bishop h7, maiden eight. But bishop e4 is maiden 13. Weird. Very strange. Still winning, but mate is the other one. Let's check. Let's take a look at this one. It should be four. It says h5. Rook d7. Okay, rook f8. Rook d1. What the heck? Oh, wow. What a move. Because mate in two. Oh, my goodness. Or three. Mate on h7. Wow. That is amazing. But right here, actually, guys, I'm just going to show you after bishop h7. King f8, bishop e4, he resigned. So he resigned right here. The game is over. This is where the man resigned right here.
But I get wow, are they turned up? Yeah, it's Friday. They downstairs getting turned up, right? It's uh they you know turned up literally drinking and, and having a good time downstairs. So, you know, be responsible out here. This should be four. So what happens if you taste now, right? It's just made, yeah, easy. Made after uh after Queen DA. Or D1, yeah. Go and join and bring some vodka. Ah, uh, you know, I got my own shots. I'll take a shot or two. Real party is here with chess. There you go, doorknob, dude. All right, but sheesh. That's right, Von Because bring us to the party. Okay. Yeah, but this was this was very beautiful. In fact, this is the part. Let's go back right here. This is the, the very the very good part that we wanted to talk about for today's lesson, right? Was um the threat is stronger than the execution. Many of you would take on H6, even in a slow push game. Right. Think about that. Even in a classical game over the board, you would play queen takes h6 here. Right. The threat is stronger than the execution. And again, the theme of that meaning and being patience, having patience, having patience here with bishop f5. And that's the move that was great here. Bishop f5 showed a complete difference. End up winning the game. What's the difference between bishop h7, bishop b4? Yeah, let's look at that again. So here, right here. Um, Bishop h7, right? And then what about h5 like you did before? Well, actually, right now, bishop e4, and then, okay, h5, rook d7, queen e1, because now he can't stop mate. So the other one, oh, okay, I get it. The other one has rook f8 as a defense. That's the only difference, I think. Here, after bishop e4, h5, right? It says rook d7. Like, you still do rook d7, but he has rook f8, which takes longer. It takes a lot longer now. Literally because of rook f8. It takes a few more moves. So, this other line, though. Check. Taking away rook f8. Then bishop e4. And then after uh, h5, which of course here is mate. So rook e7 is not a thing. If you go the h5 move like he did in the game, rook d7, right? Now you can't go rook f8. Rook e7 is still leading to mate. Ricky seven made on H eight, just a little bit faster. Crazy, you know, the one little move there. That's the small difference. What if uh, takes bishop with king? Very great question. In fact, king takes, queen takes, leads to mate. King here takes, king here. Uh, Rook D seven, yeah, Rook D seven's mate. And you also could mate, obviously, of course, here uh, another mate here here. But rook d7 is mate on the spot. If king g7, you have uh, mate here. I mean, two uh, two move mate here. Check mate right. Mate everywhere. Everything's mate. Everything's mate. Why should black play h5? Well, in fact, that's a great great question. In fact, too after bishop h7, king f8. Like in fact, after bishop e4, the best move they say is a5, b4, or c4 because there's nothing else to do. You. <laughs> You don't have anything else to do. As they're just like, well, you got to make a move, is what they're saying. They're like, you there's no good reason. You just have to make a move, right? Or resign, right? So that's what they're saying. It's not, it's, it's nothing else to do. Game over. Thanks for the follow. Try hard. Loves Daryl. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, but that's today, guys. That's today's analysis. So hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, appreciate that. What if King G8 right here? King G8. Uh, Rick D7, probably the same thing. Rick F8, Queen F5, mate. Just flip the board right. The threat is stronger than the execution. Classic, you know, elevation. If you missed it, man, you're gonna catch it on the next one. You'll catch it on the YouTube when we drop it. Moscone, thanks for the follow. No problem. Hey, man, if you are new to the YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. We see y'all on the next video.